Hey, what's up guys? It's Ty with Hardy House Games, bringing you another video on how to win. Today, I wanna to talk about how to win Tiny Towns. We have loved playing this game. If you don't know how to play, go ahead and find a how to play video. This is all about strategies and tips. The number one tip I can give you about this game can be put into five words. Pay attention to your opponents. There, it's fine. They decide most of the resources put on your board. I mean, think about it. If you're playing a four player game, that means 25% of the resources put on your board is gonna be from other players. So pay attention to what they're building, what they're gonna call next, and then decide what you can call next to ruin their board. I would also suggest um, building at least three buildings at a time. You shouldn't be placing resources down and figuring it out later, always have a building in mind on what you're gonna do with each, each resource. And if you're the type of player that doesn't really want to think about what other people are doing and focus on yourself, I would suggest a strategy of just building a lot of cottages. Those resources are pretty easy to come by, very easy build to do, um, and you can build a lot of them on the board and they really do add up. So the strategy there would just be the gray building, whatever that is, um, get cottages, and then of course, whatever farm, and it's just, just Spam those three buildings, basically. That strategy, you're bound to be a competitor every time. Now, if you're like me and want a better challenge than just spamming the same building every time, then let's talk a little bit more about mindset and maybe some building uh, strategies that go with it. Here's a game I recently played with my wife. All right, so this is the game I recently played. Um, I really like this strategy, it was really fun. Just a good mindset to, to think about when you're playing a game. So these were the cards that we were given for that round. And I really like this trading post, um, black building. You know, one point you may treat the building as a wild resource for future buildings. And so I decided to put them in the middle along with these with these uh, tailors and these help me build the tailors of course so these tailors are a point plus one for each tailor in the four center squares of your town so if they're in the center that's going to get more points but what was really cool is i was able to use these black um, trading posts to make my buildings around it and of course that tailors so i started off making um this one and then i made some tailors and i made the other black one what this does is i kept claiming a lot of gray colors and I let the opponent make a lot of cottages with these other colors, um, but by me claiming all these grays, they filled in my other resources. So I made them get a lot of gray and it forced them to build some other stuff, some sheds, maybe um, a couple chapels. This forces people to hate you because you're building a lot of grays. But then as I had these trading posts on the outside, I started building cottages and I could build this one with that. You know, I didn't need this. This was just to fill space, but I filled there and then I could fill there and then I could use these resources are these trading posts to get those resources and of course help build the um, the orchard too. What's also awesome is at the end of the game, I had this corner over here, but because of this trading post, I was able to just fill in some buildings and this gave me more points and this right here, the chapel, one for each fed cottage. And anyway, this was just a really cool, uh, cool build because of all the ways that I was just kept claiming grays and I kept turning the opponent and um, yeah, and look, I didn't even build a monument for this one. At this point, you're probably wondering, what about the purple cards? So let's talk about them. First of all, you don't need to build one to win. But if you do build one, make sure that you use it to the best of its ability. What I mean by that is look at the available buildings for that round and see how you can optimize whatever monument you have in front of you to get the best or most points out of it. But hey, if the monument really doesn't serve the purpose or how you play or how you want to um, get points this round, then don't even worry about it, just skip it. But these are my favorite purple cards to use. Monument cards. The first is Statue of Bondmaker. Basically what it allows you to do is make it so that if somebody calls a color that you don't want, you can put it under one of your cottages. So if you're using that basic strategy, you'll be able to use this guy a lot. It's... I also like Grove University. So this is worth three points by itself and it gives you an additional building of your choosing. Architects Guild. This one I really enjoy using because I can change strategy um, throughout the game. It basically takes two of your existing buildings and you can build something else in, in replace of it. I always build the wells or the fountains and then I replace those two with really high value buildings in the game. Really good strategy. Barrett Castle is just a lot of points. It's giving you five points and if it's fed, like just, just another cottage, but hey, that's a lot for one space. The obelisk of the crescent is awesome because you can place all future buildings on an empty square in your town. It's a pretty easy build, so that's great. The cathedral of Katrina is awesome because any empty square is worth zero points, and sometimes you get screwed over in a game and you have a lot of empty squares, and this just negates all that, and it can be worth a lot in the end. So what strategies help you win? Go ahead and tell us in the comments below.
So if you love simple games that can have a lot of strategy, then I think you're gonna love a game that we're creating soon. Roof's Time of Troubles is a secret identity and engine building game. Go to our website to learn more and sign up for that email updates. All right, have a good one.